This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev has pulled out of talks planned for tomorrow with Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and the leaders of France, Germany, and the European Union. Pro-government Azerbaijani news agencies reported today that Baku decided to snub the talks after Paris and Berlin rejected an Azerbaijani proposal to give Turkey a spot at the negotiating table. Azerbaijan also decided to boycott the talks after France said yesterday it will begin selling weapons to Armenia, according to the reports. Aliyev and Pashinyan had been set to hold talks with France's Emmanuel Macron, Germany's Olaf Scholz, and the EU's Charles Michel on the sidelines of the European Political Community Summit in Granada, Spain. It would have been their first meeting since Azerbaijan's lightning offensive against Nagorno-Karabakh and subsequent seizure of the region last month. After that, more than 100,000 people, almost all of Nagorno-Karabakh's population, fled to Armenia. In other diplomatic news, Politico reported today that top officials from the EU, US, and Russia met in Turkey for previously undisclosed emergency talks on Nagorno-Karabakh just two days before Azerbaijan launched its offensive. The negotiations involved diplomats Toivo Klar from Brussels, Louis Bono from Washington, and Igor Hovaya from Russia, according to unnamed sources with knowledge of the discussions. The meeting marks a rare if ultimately unsuccessful contact between Moscow and the West on a major security concern after Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 upended regular diplomacy, Politico noted. France plans to sell weapons to Armenia, the two countries' foreign ministers confirmed yesterday. France has given its consent to the conclusion of future contracts with Armenia that will allow for the delivery of military equipment to Armenia so that it can ensure its defense, France's Catherine Colonna said at a press conference in Yerevan alongside Armenia's Ararat Mirzoyan. The exact type of arms that will be supplied was not immediately clear, nor was the timeline for the deliveries. Colonna also said Paris is pushing Brussels to bolster its monitoring mission along the Armenian side of the border with Azerbaijan and to add Armenia to a European Union funding instrument that provides military support to non-member countries. Turning to the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh, Kelowna said France, a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, is working on a draft resolution to guarantee a permanent international presence in Nagorno-Karabakh. Over the weekend, a temporary UN needs assessment mission arrived in Nagorno-Karabakh, marking the first time in about three decades the organization has had access to the region. Also yesterday, Armenia's parliament voted to join the International Criminal Court, ignoring repeated and unusually strong warnings from Russia about the consequences of joining the Hague Tribunal. The vote to ratify the Rome Statute went down along party lines, with all yes votes coming from members of the ruling civil contract party, and all no votes coming from the opposition Armenia and I Have Honor blocs. Yerevan says it joined the tribunal so it can potentially take Baku to court over alleged human rights abuses and war crimes. At the same time, membership in the court, which issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin in March, means Armenia may be expected to detain Putin and extradite him to The Hague should he try to visit the country. In the run-up to the vote, Moscow repeatedly pressured Yerevan not to move forward with joining the tribunal, with senior officials warning of the most negative consequences and calling Armenia's potential membership in the court extremely hostile and unacceptable. In the meantime, Azerbaijan continues to detain high-ranking Nagorno-Karabakh officials. Yesterday, Azerbaijan's security services detained former Nagorno-Karabakh presidents Arkady Hukasyan, Bako Sahakyan, and Arai Karutunyan, as well as Parliament Speaker David Ishkhanyan. Yesterday's detentions take the total number of senior Nagorno-Karabakh officials detained by Azerbaijan since it took control of the region to at least eight. The other detainees are Ruben Vartanyan, the billionaire businessman and philanthropist who briefly served as Nagorno-Karabakh state minister, former foreign minister David Babayan, and Levon Manatsakanyan and David Manukyan, two ex-army generals. Reuters reported earlier, citing an unnamed diplomatic source, that the Azerbaijani government had drawn up a list of about 200 prominent Nagorno-Karabakh Armenians whom it wants to detain and prosecute. In other news from Nagorno-Karabakh, the UN needs assessment mission that visited the region issued its first statement on Monday, saying it saw no damage to civilian public infrastructure or to cultural and religious structures. The statement continued, The mission did not come across any reports of incidences of violence against civilians following the latest ceasefire. It added, The mission was struck by the sudden manner in which the local population left their homes and the suffering the experience must have caused. It is difficult to determine at this stage whether the local population intends to return. The statement has prompted outrage and indignation in Armenia, with Edmond Marukyan, the country's ambassador at large, accusing the mission of legitimizing the ethnic cleansing and other crimes committed by Azerbaijan and discrediting the UN as an institution. David Hakopyan, the former head of the UN development program in Syria, noted the mission may have been taken only to pre-selected areas. 
It was not immediately clear with whom the UN had spoken in Nagorno-Karabakh and whether those interviews were conducted in the presence of Azerbaijani officials. Back in Yerevan today, Pashinyan appointed Kristina Grigoryan, Armenia's former human rights defender, to head the country's newly formed Foreign Intelligence Service. A spokesperson for the Armenian government said the agency will work to identify foreign threats facing our state and society and provide officials with reliable and trustworthy intelligence information. The service is a politically neutral body and will serve exclusively the interests of the state, the spokesperson stressed. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.